All right, welcome everyone. So sorry, a little technical difficulties with the webinar, but thanks for hanging in and thank you for being here and joining us for the webinar. My name is Kurt Klaus and this is the May Monthly Agent Advantage webinar. These are all brought to you by the Guaranteed Rate family of companies. Again, thanks for hanging in. Sorry we started a little late. Today's uh, title webinar is Be a Better You. This webinar is all about you, steps to personal and professional growth with mindful wellness. It's about improving yourself, maybe addressing things that are holding you back, preventing you from being your best. We all know anxiety, stress, uh, physical stress, mental, intellectual, occupational stress, uh, big factor today. So we wanna help you take control, improve yourself. Fact that 80% of Americans experience some type of stress, work, in life, financial, physical, lots of factors. It's so easy to get derailed today, um, whether it's money or we're constantly bombarded with bad news, economy, politics, and I'm a, a firm believer that everything starts with you. Better you means not just increased happiness, but you can be better in your relationships, better parent, better wife, better husband, better son, better performance at work, which is important, uh, what we're going to cover in this webinar, and just kind of being better every single day. So today we have two great guests, and they will share some tips and takeaways to personal and professional growth with mindful wellness. If it's not something that you're aware of, we want to add this to your daily routine. If it's something you're already doing, then we want to give you a few more suggestions, ideas. Again, these webinars are all brought to you by the Guaranteed Rate family of companies and our Agent Advantage website. If you're not familiar with Agent Advantage, that is our no cost, no obligation website for all of our real estate agents across the country. It has a loan dashboard. It has connections to your expert loan officer. It's got a fully baked marketing platform from total expert that you can take and use so check out agent advantage if you're not already part of it also mention of our agent advantage insider facebook page this is a closed group it's for you it's a forum of all of our agents across the country sharing ideas real estate news click that qr code to request to join we would love to have you as part of our agent advantage insider facebook page um, again, closed group, or just go to Facebook, search Agent Advantage Insider. Very good. So today, our first guest is Tiffany Langdon, and not only is she our leadership development coach here at the Guarantee Rate Family of Companies, but more importantly, Tiffany, for the past decade, is a certified yoga and meditation instructor. Her focus is holistic wellness and that combination of her corporate expertise and her mindfulness practice is, is uh, her key to helping both individuals and helping businesses to nurture their personal and professional growth. So perfect to have Tiffany with us today. She also leads these really cool wellness retreats all over the world, been to Thailand, India, Mexico. I think she's got one coming up in Italy and she helps guide people on the journeys uh, self-discovery, rejuvenation. So Tiffany, how are you? Thank you, thank you for being with us today. Uh, do we have Tiffany on? Still not hearing you, Tiff, are you with us? Sorry, everybody. Let's try to work through this. Uncheck two. Can you hear me? Oh, we have you. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what is going on with my audio today. That's wild. That's a good, that's a good okay. save. Good. Good, good, good. All right. Well, I'll get started then. Thank you so much, 
Kurt, for your kind words and introduction. So hello, hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for tuning in to the Agent Advantage webinar today. And I think it's probably fairly safe to assume that some of you tuned in today because something about the title of this webinar piqued your interest enough that you were willing to give it one hour of your time. So maybe there's some of you out there that are here to learn more about these few small changes that you can make so that you can bring more health, longevity, and balance into your life. And in turn, once you do that, you will begin to see more positive change come about in your professional life as a result. Because the more you take care of yourself, the better you feel every day. And the more focus, clarity, and productivity you're gonna have at work, giving you the ability to be more, to do more, and even help build and cultivate better business partner relationships, client relationships, even Kurt mentioned at the very beginning, relationships with your friends and your family. Because when you invest in yourself, you're investing in all of the other positive aspects of your life. Yeah, so before I, I we get going, being, being it sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? Is you're in the relationship business and people want to work with people that they know and like and trust and it all starts with you. But yes, well said, Tiffany. It does, thanks, yeah. So I recommend for everybody to grab a pen and a paper so that you can jot down if you have any of those aha moments or if there's any parts of the presentation that resonate more with you than others. And that way you have something to reflect back upon. I'm big on having something in front of you. If you're trying to make a change or change a habit, having it right there in front of you is a constant reminder because it's so easy to get wrapped up, right? In our day in and day out life to remember to make these small changes that we always set out to do. And then second, I want to get familiar with the chat box, because if you all have any questions as I go throughout, or if you want to add any comments as we go along, feel free to use that chat box that is in your go to control panel, you should have access to that. Now, sometimes what happens when we start the webinar is your go to control panel collapses. So if you need to respond, you might have to hit that arrow expand the go-to control panel back open, and then you should have access to that chat window right there. And I'll keep my eye on it as we go through so I can grab any questions or comments as they, as they come along. And as Kurt said, at the end of the presentation today, we're also gonna view a recording from Anna Rose, who's a licensed nutritionist, and she's gonna be speaking even more in depth about diet and nutrition, and I'm really excited to see uh, that um, video at the very end as well. So Kurt, how does all that sound? You ready? That sounds perfect. And yes, we love to hear from you. So please pour your questions in the chat. If we can't get to them live, I promise you we will email you responses afterwards and make sure that our experts get your questions. Perfect. All right. Well, I think Kurt really poured it all out as far as a quick introduction to myself, but just in case you missed anything, my name is Tiffany Langdon. I've been with Guaranteed Rate Companies for 18 years. Within the walls of Guaranteed Rate, I'm currently the host of Elevate, which is our leadership development program that introduces a fresh approach towards leading our teams and our people. Before that, I used to host training sessions for our new onboarding loan originators. So I have been a part of our sales force for many years. And as you all know, also a licensed certified yoga and meditation instructor. I host classes and sessions and retreats all over the world. And right here in my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. So anytime I host a session about anything health or mindfulness related, I like to show you all in real time how truly slowing down, paying attention, and doing a small practice, which we'll do at the end of my presentation here, how that can truly impact the way that you all feel within your body. 
So we're going to do a quick check-in right here in the beginning, and we're going to do another one in the end because it's to me it's like poop is in the pudding, right? If you feel it, if it's noticeable, I think it's more likely that you're going to say, you know what, there's something to this, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to keep practicing it right over and over so that I can feel like this whenever I want to, basically on a regular basis. Because all of these little bits that we're going to be touching on today, these are all things that you can incorporate into your life. And when you do, you will experience a noticeable difference in the way that you feel. So you'll see when we get to the end. So what I want to do right here, and Kurt, you can join us in this too. I think this is, is really fun. You don't even have to change the way that you're seated. And if there's anyone out there that's taking the call in your car or anything like that, that's fine too. You can even do this while you're driving. So take a moment and just notice, maybe do like a quick scan through the body and notice how you feel right here, right now. And there's no right or wrong. So if you notice like maybe you feel some stress, stress or tension in the shoulders, maybe just take your shoulders up to the ears and roll them back a couple of times, even just doing that little bit of mo movement, I can feel like a little bit of tension releasing through my body. Or maybe you notice that you're gripping through the jaw or somewhere in your face. And if you notice that, just try to relax the muscles around your eyes and around your mouth, maybe swallow a couple of times so that you can separate your upper and your lower teeth from each other. So even that right there might even cause a little bit of shift within the energy in the body. But I also want us to take a couple of deep breaths together. So take a deep breath in through your nose, hold it at the top and then exhale through the mouth. Just let it all go and just feel that tension release. Let's do one more like that. Big breath in through the nose, exhale through the mouth. And now just start to find a natural rhythm in your breath. Nothing you need to change, just breathing in and out through the nose. But maybe you're breathing a little longer and deeper than you normally do, just because our attention is here. And when you put your attention to the breath, you generally tend to deepen and expand the breath. Good, okay. So that's all we need to do in the very beginning, just to start to check in and notice how we feel at the very start of our presentation. Now all I ask is that you all do your best to give me your undivided attention, not for my sake, but because you deserve this hour to devote to yourself. So try to minimize your distractions by turning your emails and your cell phones over so that you don't get tempted to pull away. And with that said, we're gonna really get started into the, the depth of the presentation. I wanna talk about mindfulness. So I'm sure that everyone out there all of us that are on the call, you've probably heard the word mindfulness thrown around. It's actually being thrown around a lot. It's become quite a buzzword in recent times. But mindfulness is like the backbone of the three layers that we're going to be discussing today. Because in order to integrate three steps of a better personal and professional lifestyle, you need to be mindful of your actions throughout the day and then to be able to determine if your actions, if they're pushing you towards betterment or if they're a hindrance. And also in the workplace, mindfulness, just being mindful throughout your day can bring you more focus, clarity, and productivity. And it's true, something so simple, like just being aware of what you're doing all throughout your day can bring you all of that. And I'll explain how and why in just a moment. But I actually think it would help if we start with a definition of mindfulness, just in case there's some other, like, I kind of know what it is, but I'm not really sure. So let's start with the definition of mindfulness. Now, this definition that I have on my screen, this is from Dr. John Kabat-Zinn. If anyone here is familiar with his work, he's known as being like the pioneer of mindfulness. And he describes mindfulness, it's my favorite definition so far. He describes it as the awareness that arises when you're paying attention on purpose in the present moment, but you're doing it non judgmentally. Now, there's a lot in there. I'm going to say it one more time. It's the awareness that arises when you're paying attention on purpose to the present moment, the here and the now, 
but you're doing it non-judgmentally. You're not trying to change anything. You're not trying to evoke anything. You're just being aware of the present moment. So simply put, mindfulness is awareness. And when I say that, mindfulness is awareness, it sounds so easy, doesn't it, Kurt? Like, just be mindful, Kurt, all day, every day, every moment of the day. And you can tell yourself to be aware right now in the present moment. Now that I'm saying it, I bet some of you out there are like, okay, yeah, I'm being, I'm being aware of the present moment, right? But I wonder for most of us on the call, how many distractions you all have already had since we just started this talk a few minutes ago? You've probably had a lot. We all do, because in today's world of constant change and flux, with so much information at our fingertips, with daily demands that we must tend to, we are usually never really aware of the present moment. Because instead, we're usually three steps ahead of our current thoughts. Or we're attempting to multitask, which PS, by the way, doesn't work. You can't multitask. It's not possible. Too much research has said, try, it's not going to work, right? And but, Ella, sometimes when you're in the middle of it, you may not even recognize it or you, you, know, you may not even acknowledge it until you take a pause. I know I was a little stressed not knowing if your audio would even come on, but to be, you know, per, you know present and purposeful and so really thinking about breath and calm you know, mm -hmm. absolutely work. Yeah. And for me personally, in that moment, I remember thinking, uh oh, we've got three minutes and I need to go reboot just in case, right? You never know. And like, I was having to practice. I'm like, just breathe. We're, I'm going to log back in. It's going to be fine. Right. So even I have to remind myself to not allow that stressful moment to overtake your system. Because once your system overtakes and all these things happen to your sympathetic nervous system and your body changes, your system changes. And it's important to be able to control that. So, yeah, it's a, it's important. And generally, I know all of us in this professional world, we tend to be pulled in multiple directions. Meeting here, someone needs this, client needs this, this is going on with this purchase contract, right? All of these things going on. And sometimes it's like, ah, what do I put my focus on? What gives, right? And that's the challenging part is knowing where to kind of keep your, your focus when you have so many things going on. The other thing, though, that I like to mention here is not only is it difficult because of our fast paced world that we're in, but we also as humans, we tend to dwell on things from the past. Like we ruminate sometimes over things that have happened that we no longer have access to or something that we said or something that somebody else said to us. Um, or we focus on future events. We focus on meetings and conversations or events or things that they haven't even happened yet. Has anybody ever worried about a difficult conversation that you have to have like tomorrow afternoon and you really are worried about it? You're worried about how the person is going to react. And then sometimes you get to that conversation and you're like, well, it didn't go so bad after all. And you worked yourself up, right, for a day and a half waiting for this conversation that you thought was going to be so stressful to happen. So we do that. We work ourselves up. We stress ourselves out. We lose sleep even over this. I know a lot of you out there probably struggle with sleep at night. So mindfulness can really draw us back and you have to be aware, but it's practice and you have to train yourself to draw back and be aware of the task at hand, whatever it is that you're working on. Because it is here in the present moment where the magic can happen. It's right here right now where you have the ability to focus and do good work and be mindful of your emotions, your reactions, your intentions, et cetera, so you have to continually remind yourself to come back to this one moment because it's really all we have. We don't have the past anymore, it's gone. We don't have the future, it's not here yet. So we're always trying to skirt around to something that really doesn't exist. So that's why mindfulness is so important and how it can help, help us. So you can apply the act of mindfulness to all aspects of your life. And today, the three steps that we're going to focus on, and to me, these are the three steps that really bring all of the aspects of your life full circle.
So we're going to focus on nourishing yourself, moving yourself, and balancing yourself. Because as I was saying, in the realm of health and longevity, these are the three non-negotiables. If you truly want to live a meaningful long life with energy, with ease and mobility. And in turn, if you make these small positive changes that we're going to be discussing, you become healthier both mentally and physically. And you become happier. You become better, a better you, which is what this chat is all about here today. And when you do that, it creates more capacity. What You're kind of creating more space that didn't exist before for a better life, personally and professionally. You become a better spouse, like Kurt said, a better business partner. You align yourself with more positive energy and you find this groove. I don't know how to describe it. It's a vibe. It's a groove. Call it what you want. Like it's an energy level. But like attracts like. It's the law of attraction. Victor talks about it all the time, right? We talk about it within our company all the time. So you begin to find yourself working with people who are also on this vibe. You know what I mean? And you start noticing more business flow starting to come in, sweeter conversations with your clients, your friends, and your loved ones. I could go on and on about how this could happen. That's a conversation for a different day. But the core of all of this is back to awareness. It's being aware that you actually want to make a change and being aware of what serves you and what doesn't. And if something doesn't serve you, to have the courage, the ability, the audacity to say thanks, but no thanks. That's not going to serve me today. So that's about creating boundaries. Another conversation for another day. But being aware of what actions that you take daily that lend to a mindful, healthy lifestyle. Anything you want to add to that, Kurt? Any thoughts on that? Totally agree that sometimes it's, um, you know, saying no and deciding on who you want to surround yourself with. But yeah, the, the positivity uh, piece that you just mentioned too, I think is is really huge to, to be around people that are like-minded that will mm -hmm. you know, fuel law of attraction, et cetera. Yeah. And sometimes you have to change who you are allowing yourself to even hang out with or who you're letting in your life, right? Because I've I've gone through that as I've learned more and more of these lessons throughout my life. And and it's in the negativity people will love to be, you know, negative and complain around each other. It just feeds itself. And you know, being around people like that, you know, yeah. Not the group I want to be with. Yeah. Their energy sucks. They're energy vampires. That's what I call them. Yeah. So yeah, you got to be careful with that. So let's start with the first of the three. I want to start with nourishing yourself. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to reveal some suggestions one by one as we discuss them on the screen. But one thing I want to make sure is loud and clear is some of these suggestions, well, all of them, they're just suggestions. And some of them may not work specifically for you. So there might be some things that come up and you might say, okay, yeah, Tiff, well, I can't do that because... I have something else that's going on within my body that doesn't allow for that. So I'm gonna simply suggest that you skip over that one and maybe pay more attention to some of the other ones. But remember, these are all simply suggestions or tips that could potentially make a big difference in your life. So I always like to start by talking about making sure that you're drinking enough water. This is something that's very easy to forget if you're not mindful of, and I'm guilty of it all the time. I always have to keep a, a glass of water or something next to me. I actually meant to mention it at the very beginning. Go grab yourself a glass of water before we get started. And by the time we finish, drink your glass of water. Now, the reason I suggest this, Anna is actually going to go deeper into this and explain a little bit more about what type of water you should drink and things like that. And I think it's very interesting. Um, but I think that it's important to drink a lot of water throughout the day because what I find, if I'm having an energy dip, what I do is I go stand up, I go grab some filtered water out of my refrigerator, I take a big drink and immediately I feel my energy come back within the body. You feel it in the body. It's very interesting how, how important that is. But if you're feeling the same too, where you're in between meetings and you're like, man, I've got two, three more to go. What a long day. Grab yourself some water, not a pop, not a Coke, 
not at anything else, grab yourself some water. Real water. I'm big on that too. Real water. Not, you know, flavored waters and carbonated waters and things like that too. There's a difference. You'll see that when Anna gets to that part. It's also really important to make sure that the diet that we have for ourselves every day, and this is not easy to do every single day, especially when we have kids that are all going to activities after school and things like that. So I understand that some of these things can't happen 100% of the time, but eating real whole foods that provide necessary nutrients. And I say that because darn it, what happens in our food industry drives me crazy by having to constantly like, dissect food labels and make sure that whatever it is that we're eating is actually nutritious. And that's difficult because our food labels are very confusing with things that say fat free and low calorie and things like that. But all of those are just marketing ploys that try to make you think that you're getting something more healthy. But what I found, if you stick to a diet that's just natural food, something that doesn't come out of a bag, it doesn't come out of a box, um, something that you grow, something that you plant, something that you can buy from the store that's organic and whole and nutritious. These things are very important. I also suggest, and sometimes this is a little controversial, but I'm vegan. I've been vegan for over 13 years, so I'm a fan of this. But even if you're not and you never will be, I don't judge. I think that's great. I support, you know, whatever it is, whatever diet you prefer to do, et cetera, as long as you think it's healthy and right for you. But it is a great idea to maybe think about one time per week, replacing something that you normally would eat with meat with something that's maybe a different alternative type of protein. Um, quinoa, lentils, beans, et cetera, can be really helpful in that realm. I'm huge on staying away from fast food. I can honestly say, I can't even tell you the last time that I've driven my car through a fast food drive through I'm totally like, drives me crazy that we have so many at our fingertips and just how easy it is to make a poor choice, especially when we're on the go as we all are and how easy it is to drive through Wendy's, McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, whatever is your, your choice. Um, but I really encourage all of us to really think about what it is that you're actually ingesting when you go through the drive through and a lot of it isn't even what it's labeled as. So think about what you're eating when you go through fast food, and if it's something that you do on a regular basis, maybe just try to do it a little less, you know what I mean? Don't do it as often. And then the last thing I like to talk about under nourishing yourself is because all of these things are difficult to do because we're always moving, we're always going, we have the next meeting that we have to attend, the next client that we have to get with, it does really help to prepare your meals ahead of time. I'm a big fan. I do a lot of uh, meal preparation on Sundays. And then that way, whenever I have that moment where I haven't had a lot of time to prepare something to eat throughout the day, at least I have something quick and healthy that I can grab out of the refrigerator or I can throw in my bag as I'm running around as well. I always keep a bag of um, salt-free nuts or trail mix or something like that in my purse, but also some really good things that I keep in my refrigerator because I've prepared them ahead of time. And it's not like you open your refrigerator and you're like, I don't have anything because nothing is ready, right? So prepping your meals can be very helpful for that. So let me pump the brakes before we go to the second one, which is moving yourself. And let me just see, um, I'm gonna go to the chat and just see if there's anything that has come through. I don't see anything, but reminder, if you all have any questions, comments, put them in the chat. I'd love to hear from you. Um, Kurt, any thoughts here? Do you do any of these practices yourself? I try and I like how you simplify it. Just eat real food, clean food. Someone said work the outside of the grocery instead of the middle yes. where the vegetables and the fresh breads and the fresh meats are and you know just simplify it and try to eat clean real food and the, the yes. prep piece yes it's work but setting yourself up for success um you, you could change your whole week just the time you spend yeah. on sun have a plan. yes the only thing i say about the middle of the grocery store is the one thing I can't stay away from in the middle of the grocery store, tortilla chips. I'm always yes. going to pick up some tortilla chips and salsa. That's me always. And some canned beans or I always do those little like box of beans or whatever, because that's always fast and easier than like preparing them from dried, which I also do that too. But um, 
but yeah. But no, okay. no crazy fad diets or, you know, quick fixes. It's just, you know, the fundamentals of clean, real food. Yes. And I would say that a combination of eating clean, real, whole food um, and having a balanced diet on your plate when you do it with, you know, the carbs versus the protein and your vegetables, et cetera. But also with the next part that we're going to talk about with moving yourself, I think that these two things combined and balance too, all three of them combined, if you're doing them, you won't have a need for something like, and I'm not going to say anything negative about the fad diets because, you know, some people get some success from them. But if you're using a diet, paleo, keto comes to mind, something like that, that causes you to lose weight really fast. But then when you go back to a regular regimen and you gain it right back, you're just causing yourself a lot of stress on the body from the back and the forth and the back and the forth and the back and the forth. Um, so, but I know there's, you know, a lot of people that find success from that and they just continue to go back to it, but um, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Let's go to the second one, moving yourself. Now, before I talk about moving yourself, let me just explain what I mean by some of these that are coming up on the screen. A part of this talk is about longevity. And one thing that has been on my mind personally, longevity is kind of like my word of the year. So when 2024 started, instead of a resolution, for me, I always choose a word of the year. So my word this year is longevity. And I started thinking about like, as I'm aging and as I look around at my other friends who are in the same age bracket and older, and even as I look at my mom or um, before when my grandparents were around and the way that I noticed that they get around. And I noticed that it's difficult, right, for them to stand up and sit down and to get in and out of the, the vehicles and to, um, you know, just do do regular things throughout throughout their life. And one thing I've noticed that is on the decline for some of the older generation that has trouble getting around is they didn't stay mobile throughout their life. And this is one thing that has been on my mind so much. And here's the thing about being mobile and staying consistent with it. That's why I say just move your body every day in some way. This does not, I am not saying you have to run. I am not saying that you have to ride a bike. I'm not saying you have to do strenuous activity by any means. In fact, I think opposite. I have found that the opposite is better for me. If anyone out there is a runner or you know any a triathlete or anything like that, I think that's great. But the older we get, the uh, the more um, challenging that can be on our joints and on our ligaments and everything as well, knees and ankles and and things like that. So when I say move your body, I talk about finding an activity that you actually enjoy, so that it never feels like I have to get a workout in today. So many people are taking up activities like pickleball. I think that's so interesting. A lot of people love pickleball right now. And a lot of my friends who play it don't feel like they're exercising. They're out there just having a really good time exercising with their friends as they play pickleball. So that's what I mean. And I, I read a book by Darren Olean. I don't know if you all know who he is, but I, I really enjoy um, some of his things that he has to say. And he, what he says in his in his book is, depending on where your age bracket is, but if you're in my age bracket or above, something like that, somewhere around that. Um, if you remember as a child, you would go outside at night and you would just play until the street lights came on. And then your mom or dad would call and then you would come in and have dinner and you would be exhausted and you would crash in bed at night. Like you just couldn't wait to get into the bed because you were so exhausted. Well, a lot of us lose sleep at night because we don't do enough activity throughout the day. So our brain is still active and we're not tired enough yet. We haven't exerted ourselves to be able to get a good night's rest. So I think about that a lot. Like, what is it that you like to do, whether it's just getting outside and gardening and doing some heavier yard work, walking around, hiking. You can see here, enjoy nature, go for a hike, go for a walk. If you have a dog like I do, get your dog on a leash, take them hiking, walking. They'll love it too. You got to work out their energy as well. And then I saved the last two um, kind of best for last type of thing, strength training. And strength training is getting a lot of recognition lately, but I would say it's been around for a long time. It's just that now there's more research showing that the older we get, if we don't maintain strength training, we lose a lot of bone density and muscle mass. It starts happening as we age. And one way that you can combat that is by strength training. 
Um, and it doesn't have to be super heavy. It doesn't mean you have to go get a gym membership. I have three sets of dumbbells in my lower level that I work out four times a day. I strength, or, sorry, four times a week, not a day. Goodness gracious, four times a week. Um, and that's really important, you know, get your blood pumping, builds your bone density, your muscle mass, of course, is very important. And then the final thing I say, I, I put it all in one bucket, yoga, stretching, spinal flexibility, and mobility. I put all of that in one because as we age, the one thing that you can do to help you stay healthy, strong, and be able to move around is flexibility in the spine. So that means maybe at night before you go, go to bed, doing a couple of cat cow movements, if you know what that is. If you have more flexibility in the spine, um, I can't believe it's sitting right here, but I have like a little yoga wheel, something like this. So if I watch Netflix, my back is on this and I'm rolling over it so that I can um, do a back bend as I'm watching TV or something like that. Not the whole time, but I do break it out. And that um, yoga wheel can really help you with back bends as well if it doesn't come so easily. But stretching your body is so important. And you probably notice if you don't stretch your body on a regular basis, you feel it. So again, proof is in the pudding. If you stretch, you feel good. So it's really important to keep that up. Okay, I'm going to pump the brakes again. Any thoughts, Kurt? I don't Movement. see any chat. I know living in a busy city, you're sitting in your car twice a day, going to work and coming home. You're sitting at your desk all day. This is a challenge and I to try to schedule it and make it a part of my day, even if it is just a, a stretch. But I love all your points here and enjoying it. I love to swim. Like that's been a game changer, not just the movement, but the relaxation too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Swimming is a great activity to take on. Exactly. Yeah. And even with the stretching part, that's something that you can do, you know, even when you're laying in bed in the morning, right before you get up, it doesn't have to take a ton of time, you know, just really doing a couple laterals, getting in the side, down to the waist, you know, that's a really, hips are really important area, that outer hips. Um, and that will definitely help you with, with longevity. It'll help you in the long run. That's for sure. Okay. We're on the final one and that is balancing yourself. So we're gonna circle back to that mindfulness piece. So we talked already about the importance of mindfulness and just simply being aware of your actions throughout the day. Um, when you're at work and you find that, oh my gosh, I've got this deadline, I've gotta call this to get this person to get their docs in, I've got it here, I got it this, I got it that, right? I got so much going on. When you find yourself in that moment of flux and so much to do, to me, that is like the ding, da, da, ding, ding, right? That's the alarm that says something is going on here and you need to slow down and become aware. So it doesn't mean you have to change it. It doesn't mean that magically you become less busy. But what it means is that magically you work through your busyness with more productivity, focus, and clarity because you can focus on doing one thing at a time instead of like, I have to get all of this done right now. I don't even know where to start right? Allowing you to kind of work through and, and get through your day a little bit more with ease just by simply bringing awareness into the picture. I can't actually believe it, but one thing I forgot to put on this, this screen here in, in the options and the slideshow um, is breath work. And that's something that we're going to do really quick here in just a minute. We're going to do a little bit of breath work within our mindfulness practice, again, so that you can see what happens breath work is one of those things where if there's anyone out there that does suffer from anxiety or even depression or stress etc breath work is actually it's an anchor that brings you to the present moment so breath work and mindfulness are like two peas in a pod they go together perfectly so when you bring your attention to the breath and you're bringing your awareness to the breath right you start to become more into the present moment less stressed about what's about to happen or something that you're ruminating over from the past that's causing you to have short choppy breath um what happens with breath is um as you elongate your breath cycle what happens is you're tapping into your parasympathetic nervous system that's the part of your system that notifies your body that all is good in the hood you know what i mean and like relax everything's fine 
The sympathetic nervous system is like, oh my God, chaos, everything is going on. I'm getting ready to get eaten by a tiger. That's what everyone uses, right? The old, old, old ancient, you're getting ready to get eaten by a tiger. Your body starts to kick in and starts to uh, give you the adrenaline and everything that you need to handle it. That's the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, when you are in the sympathetic nervous system, what generally happens is your system changes. And I'll briefly explain how it happens. What happens is your breath becomes short and choppy. Think about a time when you were late to a meeting and you were in traffic. Like just, I'm, it's happened to every single one of us. Just th think about how in that moment, how you felt. You were probably like, oh my God, oh my God, I gotta get to the meeting, oh my God. So all of a sudden you're like, this traffic, it's driving me nuts, oh my God, nobody's going anywhere. And all of a sudden, your heart starts to beat faster and your breath becomes short and choppy. And then by the time you arrive at your meeting 15 minutes late, you throw the door open, you throw your bag down, you're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry, I'm late. And then everyone's looking at you like, it's fine, right? And then you have worked yourself up and you've tapped into your sympathetic nervous system. So what happens is as you get acclimated in that meeting and as the meeting ends, you start to come back down, right? So now your breath becomes longer and smoother because you're no longer in that system or in that mode of system. So that's why breath work is so, is so important. When you put your attention to the breath and you attempt to elongate and deepen the breath, you are now shifting into that parasympathetic nervous system and bringing more calm to the body. So anytime you feel stress, no matter where you are, in the shower, in the car, sitting at your desk, um, dealing with the kids at dinner time at night, right, wherever you are, you can put your attention to the breath, deepen and elongate it, and you will start to calm down the system. I also have on here gratitude and journaling. I'm really big into gratitude. And I don't mean gratitude as in, yay, everything is so light and fluffy. I mean gratitude more in the sense of thinking about all of the things in your world that you truly are grateful for. And when you step into that state of mind, what happens is you're also tapping into your parasympathetic nervous system. You're reminding yourself of all the good things that you have in your life. You're bringing more positivity instead of negativity in your life. And then the final one right there is the act of kindness and giving back. Um, I do this often where I'm in the coffee shop drive through and pay for the person behind me or something like that, you know. Um, I actually had a time where I did that before and then the person ended up at the stoplight next to me and I was like, oh my God, they're right next to me. And they turned down the window. They're like, heck yeah, awesome, right? And they're like, I'm going to do it next time, you know? So then it rolls on and other people start to feel that like, wow, that was a really cool experience. But also just finding a way to give back to your community, give back, you know, with, within your family, helping when people are in need and things like that. All of that starts to bring balance into the system. Now, wrapping all of this up, that's why I say if you eat well, have good diet, hydrate yourself. If you move your body, you feel good, right? You stretch out the body, you build mobility, you build stronger muscle mass, you build your bone density so that as we start to age, you have that mobility. You're not struggling to get in and out of the car, et cetera. And then when you take care of your mind and you balance yourself with meditation, mindfulness, journaling, gratitude, et cetera, you start to bring all of the spokes on your wheel into balance. Because if one spoke is off, what happens? You don't have that well-oiled machine. So then the wheel starts to shake and things start to break down. So it is important to find a really good balance among all of these. All right, before we go to practice, I'm gonna pause one more time. I see there was a, a chat that came through that says, nourish your mind too. I love that. Yes, 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 yes. Good, I'm glad you said that. Thank you. Shall we practice, Kurt? You ready? I am ready, yeah. I think to, you know, to- We'll do a little, you don't have to a minute be, and a half. You don't have to meditate every single day or become a yogi, but if you could take one little tip from what Tiffany talked about with the nourish and the movement and the balance. I think it could, you know, improve everyone's life on the call. So great stuff. Yeah, excited for the finale here, Tiffany. Okay, here it comes. So just like before, you don't even have to change your seat. You don't have to move. 
Um, the only thing I recommend is if you are seated and if your legs are crossed or your ankles are crossed, just simply uncross your legs or your ankles and bring both of your feet flat down to the floor below you. And you don't even have to close your eyes. We're gonna do this with our eyes open. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our attention. We're gonna take our awareness that we've been talking about. We're gonna be mindful of our breath. So just start to notice the flow of the breath as you breathe in and out through your nose. So you're breathing in through the nose and you're breathing out through the nose. In through the nose, out through the nose. Now again, you don't even have to attempt to change the depth of the breath, but I bet naturally your breath is gonna become deeper just simply because we've taken our focus to it. And that's okay, of course, if that happens naturally. But we don't wanna to try to attempt to push anything or make anything happen that isn't ready to happen yet. So we're breathing in through the nose and we're breathing out through the nose. Now take your awareness to any sound around you within the room in which you're located. So if you have a window in your room, try to keep your awareness closer in range. You might even notice the buzzing of your computer or maybe even the air unit, anything that you hear around you. You're just noticing, you're observing, that's all. It's like, kind of like you're spying in and noticing what you hear. You even can start to expand your range of sound. And if you do have a, a window, maybe take your range of sound outside of the window or outside of the room in which you're located. Just notice what you hear. And if your mind wanders, it's okay. It happens to all of us, every single one of us. Just bring it back. Just come back to the practice. Okay, so now that you've taken your sense of sound wider, let's draw that back in. So let's start to walk it back. So bring your awareness to sound back into the room in which you're located. And then let's come back to the breath, awareness to the breath, breathing in through the nose out through the nose, in through the nose, out through the nose. And if you did close your eyes, you can allow your eyes to start to open. Now, um, before we transition to Anna, because we're gonna put Anna on the screen right next, would anybody be willing to go to the chat section and just see if you notice a difference in the way that you feel here and now? Because what we just did was we brought ourselves to the present moment just by listening. It's one of the five senses. You hear, you smell, you touch, you taste. And that is how you observe your life. It was right here in the present moment. It was a pretty simple practice. Okay. So for the sake of time, I don't see anything coming through on the chat, and that's okay. But I know we need to buzz over to, to Anna's presentation. So. Kurt, are you ready? Want to do that? I think we're ready, but I wanted to thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I love your energy and thanks to everyone being on the webinar to actually take time to improve themselves. And sometimes it's, you know, taking pause and thinking about ways to improve yourself and we really appreciate you breaking it down for us. Tiffany, you saw all her uh, social sites. If you want to get a hold of her, you could ask us questions uh, here as well. But yes. great stuff, Tiffany. Uh, Thanks, Kurt. Love, love the presentation. Um, grateful to, to have you on board. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. And to kind of piggyback on, I know Tiffany talked about her, her nourish topic, but we want to bring in Anna Rose. We were lucky enough to record an interview with Anna, who's going to go into a deeper dive on the, on the nutrition piece. So a little over 10 minutes to talk. Uh, we have um, uh, Anna Rose, who again is a registered uh, counselor and nutritionist at Anna Rose Rupp Wellness. She, she specializes in helping women with confidence and energy, but she promotes holistic energy 
to everybody. So this is our earlier interview with Anna Rose. If we can play this, and again, Anna talks about uh, nutrition in her four tips to add to Tiffany's presentation. Let's give this one more try. If not, we will tack it onto the recording and put it on the side. Let's try one more here. All right. Hey, you guys. Um, it's really nice to be here. Sorry about the glitch. Let's give it one more go. Otherwise, we will. Here she is. All right. Hey, you guys. Um, it's really nice to be here in the space. Thanks for having me. I'm always <laughs> like enthused about uh, connecting people with a better understanding of their bodies and their needs and looking at things in a wider scope of like just going to the gym for 45 minutes or just having one quote unquote good meal and then a cheap meal or whatever. These are hard constructs that we don't need to live in and we need to start looking at things that are just like more of a whole lifestyle shift. And so that's what I'm really passionate about. And like uh, Kurt had said, I do coach women primarily online because I just feel like we need more space for that. And a lot of the information out there is solely based off of men. So I'm here to kind of shake up that narrative a little bit, but that doesn't mean I'm not passionate about everybody's well-being. And of course, today, the things that we'll be talking about will be applicable to everyone. And I would even argue that there's some of the basics, but even if they're quote unquote basic, they're super important. And if we don't really nail these building blocks, anything extra or anything else or anything more isn't really going to do anything for you. So we always have to kind of start with the basics and kind of build from there. And uh, hopefully we are able to take some actionable steps with the stuff we'll be talking about today. So uh, Kurt, if you wouldn't mind throwing up my first uh, slide for me. Perfect. And again, thank you for being with us. We're lucky to have Anna Rose and we thought it would be uh, ideal for the webinar topic we have is to bring in you and take a deeper dive into the nutrition piece. So I will put up the slide. And again, thanks for being here. Of course. And what I like about this too is, you know, sometimes we're like working hard at the gym and we're maybe not getting the results that we want, whether it's like a physical result or an internal result, um, energy, sleep, whatever. And we kind of sleep on the nutrition aspect of things. Both are very important, but I, I find that's a very common disconnect where we, we feel like we're getting all the workouts in and we're doing all the right things, um, but we're not really looking at the way that we're fueling our bodies. And so that's essentially what we're going to be talking about today is nutrition tips for a better you. And I think even the language in that opening is very, very important because it's not necessarily about transforming yourself or being a whole new person. I think it's about coming home to yourself and really identifying with your unique needs and being able to build a better connection with not only your body, but having that literacy to understand the signals it sends you as well nutrition tips for a better you. And I'm going to take you through like four actionable things that are categorized into eat high protein, don't skip meals, which I think is a really big one to drive home. Uh, we need to chew really well and not necessarily just that, but just being very mindful while we're enjoying our meals, key on enjoying and staying hydrated. And what exactly that means throughout the day. Um, does it mean chugging four of your Stanley water bottles, you know, maybe not. And, and we'll get into that once we hit, hit that slide. So um, we can go ahead there. Perfect. So number one, eating high protein. I think first and foremost, we have to talk about the different types of protein. And when we look at different types of protein, what we're looking for are the amino acids, we're just, which are just uh, molecules that put together a protein. So what you want are 20 total amino acids with your protein. There's nine essential, and that's really key. Essential is 
exactly that. It's, it's a key nutrient that we need and we cannot create them from other amino acids. We have to absorb them from food. So just even thinking about muscle on the body, uh, protein does a lot more than just build muscle, but that's what we often think about when we think about protein. And once we turn 30, our body stops producing that on its own. So it's really important that we fuel ourselves with high protein content and then making sure that we're getting all of those nine essential acids, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, essential acids, so that we are getting those nutrients that we're not able to develop on our own. They are needed for vital processes, like the building blocks of our cells. So if we're feeling a little wonky, a little brain foggy, and just generally, generally low energy, that's such an important thing to look at is am I getting enough protein and am I getting enough of the right proteins? So we've got the synthesis of hormones and neurotransmitters, we've got energy production, we've got detoxification, and ultimately the list does go on. But then we have to talk about the different types of protein. We've got animal-based protein, we've got plant-based protein. Now, with that being said, uh, yes, big believer, believer in animal protein. It's a primal need that we fill. Again, I know that people make different choices for a lot of different reasons. So at the very least, if you're going to be plant-based, then you have to pair things together to make them complete protein. So grains and legumes go together, legumes and nuts go together, legumes and seeds, grains and dairy. So as far as eating high protein goes, like adults, I would say you need at least a minimum of 100 grams of protein a day. And again, that needs to be complete protein. So if you're taking collagen in the morning and calling that 15 grams of protein, unfortunately, that's just the collagen of the protein. It's not a complete protein. And while those nutrients can be awesome, I wouldn't count that towards your protein intake. I also wouldn't opt for things like a protein shake as a meal replacement. If we're filling in the gaps, by all means, um, but making sure that we're prioritizing those whole nutrient-dense foods super important. So like I said, you're hitting a minimum of 100 grams of protein a day. Uh, some people probably need more. So I think it's really important that we don't skip meals. It can really raise havoc on your nervous system, especially if you're having coffee first thing in the morning and then not eating until like two o'clock. Having that caffeine, that adrenaline burst is just like, ooh, blood sugar, nervous system is just crazy. So to take care of our nervous nervous system, we got to take care and nurture our blood sugar. And furthermore, if we're not eating balanced meals throughout the day, this is what often leads to that binge eating at the end of the day. If you're the person who's like, okay, well, I ate really healthy. I had a salad for lunch and then I get home and I have my whole bag of Doritos and I've got a whole sleeve of Oreos and I just can't stop and I'm just a monster. Chances are you're not eating as healthy as you thought you were throughout the day. If you're skipping meals, if we're not eating high proteins, if we are just kind of working through the day and not being very mindful about our choices, we're not satisfied either. So if we're kind of restricting and then leading into binging, this is something that we want to kind of coerce back into balance. So balanced meals are going to have the protein, the carb, the fat within each. Uh, and even when we're snacking, like think mini meals, right? Like we want to pair those things together. I think it's really important to eat your first meal within an hour of waking. And again, that's going to help nurture your blood sugar. I know things like intermittent fasting are really trendy right now. And while that might, and very keyword, might be the right fit for some people, I don't think it's the right move for most people. And to kind of change your perspective on it a little bit, keep in mind that when you're sleeping, you're not eating, right? So you're arguably fasting while you're asleep. And when you wake up in the morning and you have breakfast, you are breaking your fast, break fast, breakfast, right? So let's just change our like construct around that. I think oftentimes intermittent fasting is just like an excuse to not eat meals. Um, whereas the idea behind it is like, you're just eating within a certain hours, but you should still be eating the same amount of calories that you would if you weren't intermittent fasting. So just kind of have to change our framing around that. And I think more so it's really important that we don't ignore our hunger signals. So if you're like, oh, I'm really hungry, but I'm just going to fight it off because I want to be healthy and I don't want to that's not the way. So making sure that we manage our blood sugar and take care of our nervous system, we don't want to skip meals. And I think usually like three to four hours, like every three to four hours having a meal is, is a good move. 
so number three, chewing really, really well, which probably sounds really juvenile, but think about the last time you've like really sat down and chewed your food to mush and just really taken in what you're doing. I think a lot of us eat at our desk. We're working at the same time. We were maybe watching TV. We're standing at the counter. We're eating in our car. We're walking and eating, right? We, a lot of us probably live in a city, right? Or we just have kids or we have appointments or we have dogs or just so many things that fill up our time. But what if you just took 30 minutes to yourself? 30 minutes, that's a nice container. It sets some boundaries, sit down, chew your food really, really well, and just enjoy that time, right? Enjoy your food, enjoy that time. Um, part of why we want to do this is because when you're digesting, right, like your body breaks down the food. So what are you doing when you're chewing? You're breaking down the food. And if we're not taking the time to really do that carefully and just swallowing pretty big chunks of food, that's going to make it so much harder on your digestive system. So it can cause bloating. It can cause irregular digestion. It can cause a lot of discomfort. It can cause gas, just a lot of things that we don't love when it comes to digesting. So I just kind of provided some questions, like ask yourself, like, are you having at least one bowel movement a day? Is it in the morning? Is it passing easily? Or is it too easily? Are we experiencing a lot of urgency? Are we uncomfortable with bloating a gas after eating? Do we have an acid reflux? Like all of these things are going to guide you towards like, okay, we need to take care of our dig digestive system. So if you're having the one bowel, bowel move in a day, great, we're good. In the morning, even better. The rest of those are kind of like, mm, maybe we need to double check how we are pre-digesting when we chew and uh, making things a little bit easier on ourselves. Yeah. And then we can totally go to this last slide. Fantastic. Staying hydrated is super important. And like I kind of said at the beginning of the call, is drinking those giant jugs the way? Arguably not, especially if you're just drinking straight up water. One, tap water's got its own thing going on. Two, if you're drinking filtered water, awesome, filtered, but there's no minerals, there's no nutrients, there's no electrolytes. So if you are just drinking a bunch of plain water, throughout the day, you're kind of just flushing out your nutrients, honestly. And so if you're like, wow, I'm drinking water all day and I still feel really dehydrated, then you need to mineralize your water. So a mineral salt, meaning pink Himalayan salt, sea salt, not table salt, mineral salt, taking a little pinch, putting it in your water. Perfect. So easy. There's other things like Element and other brands where you can get powders, whatever, but you don't even have to spend money on that, right? You just take a little pinch and if you can taste the salt, then like maybe that's a little bit too much. You really shouldn't even be able to taste it, but it really makes a difference in the way that we are able to maintain and absorb that hydration. Another thing to think about is, hey, vegetables and fruits can totally hydrate you too. So there's other ways that we can stay hydrated. And if we're someone who doesn't eat a lot of vegetables or a lot of fresh foods, fruits, uh, maybe, a good cue to just give that a shot and see if we can introduce, and introduce more things into, more our, things meals, into our meals um, that are going to be um, hydrating as well. Hydrating Staying hydrated well. is really important for your digestion. It's also helpful to stabilize your hunger cues. I do not advise being hungry and then drinking water to try and fight off those cues. We just talked about how we don't want to ignore that. But if you're, again, someone who's just like, I can't stop snacking, I'm binging a lot, like, are you hydrated? You know, and staying hydrated will help kind of traffic control those hunger cues versus getting confused on whether you're actually hungry or not. Um, it's also really supportive for your kidneys and your brain function. Kidneys especially, we want to make sure that we're supporting those so that they can detox and support us properly. So giving them that hydration. And then just like some other little tips with that is don't over drink the water. I think I've driven that one home pretty hard, especially the plain water. But um, as far as staying hydrated goes, I think the minerals are like the main, main point there. Yeah, for sure. And that's how you can reach me. Perfect. Um, you can also find me on Instagram. You guys messaging me on there is, is really good. And I've got some contact links on there too, if that uh, URL is a little bit long for you. <laughs> we appreciate you joining us. This is perfect. Thanks for helping our audience. We showed Anna Rose's website there if you need to get a hold of her, but can't thank you enough. Thank you for joining our webinar. Yeah.
Thanks, Anna. Thank you everyone for those that hung with us. Lots to think about here. Um, glad you joined us. Um, take care of yourself, make time for yourself. Appreciate you joining the webinar. Uh, hope you join the next Agent Advantage monthly webinar. Thanks, have a great rest of your day.